I don't know why that tune is in my head, but I just love it. It's this amazing little ditty. Um, it's a song, but I don't know the words, but I just felt like singing it. What's up, y'all? What is up, y'all crazy people? Is it me or is this world crazy? Or is it because now that we have social media, we could just see how crazy each other is? Because, yeah, y'all crazy. I'm crazy. It's crazy. Um, from killing people to dressing different to being different to fake meat to fake food to fake hair to fake butts to fake everything so fake it's all fake y'all and it's like one day god willing we'll see the fakes if, if that makes any sense to you all if not i pray that the real ones continue to stay real to what you believe is real and just stay woke man because there's so much fakery and phoniness going on and I do think that we are starting to see if you really think about the people that are drawn to being fake and drawn to having fake bodies and fake food and fake everything I think it is finally starting to separate us real old plain people that just are happy with the body that God gave us and the things that we have to give to this crazy fake world like actually thank you thank you for creating fake things because i'm noticing that the people that are drawn to it it's easier to tell what kind of person they are inside so yeah other than that life is good went to the gym today um my workouts are getting easier so i need to i know i need to amp it up and i'm really not wanting to but i know i need to so maybe july 1st i will when I say that like I've been on the dip machine and the weight is getting easy for me so I need to probably do more but I have this thing I'm perplexed because I'm about to turn 46 right and I know that's not an excuse and this is the excuse I give myself all the time I'll be like I'm getting older I don't need to go that hard but then on the same token I'm like I'm getting older I need to stay strong it's like that battle where like I'm getting older like I should be able to just look how I want or whatever but then it's like I know I don't like that because then when I look in the mirror I'll be like so it just sucks that internal battle but I know I do need to amp it up while I still got my youth on my side because I'm 46 I'm still a young chick out here in these streets let's go to the news I really have not checked in with the news today Sometimes I look at it, sometimes I don't. Um, let's see what we got. Okay. Um, I just seen something about like Twitter is so crazy, dude. I don't even like I can't even keep up with some of the stuff when I open this app. To rent a studio apartment in New York right now is $3,200. One bedroom is $4,200 and two bedrooms is $5,400. What kind of money are y'all making out there? So they're saying that Airbnb is dying off. I've never liked Airbnb. I'm more of a verbo, but I like to call it VRBO. I feel like they're a little more classier. But somebody said Airbnb is dying because of greedy hosts. Airbnb was cheaper alternative to hotels. You pay less to have more privacy and freedom, but now Airbnb costs just as much as a hotel. What's the benefit? You can get room service and free cleaning. I mean, yeah, I'm like I said, I've never been a fan of um, Airbnbs. So these strippers got robbed for at least 10000 after dancing during the BET Awards weekend. And I guess that's trending because people like, who really got robbed? The strippers or the men that paid them. It's still messed up to rob anybody, period. That's messed up. So somebody's baby mama slept with their brother. Let's see. What you mean? Nick? You know what I'm here? Clean, bro. Like, no, no, no. Like, no, it's not about that, though. But you got some... What you running for? Because I want these people to know how you slept with my brother. Whoop-de-doo. Everybody knew what's up you. 
So what did I say about you though? What's the type, what type of girl did I say about you? What you mean? What you mean? Guys, go back and I'll do it. But you fuck my brother though. Okay. Like, what you want, cookie? Like, but we got kids, you my baby mom. Okay, I don't want you no loyalty. What you mean you want me no loyalty? We got a whole kid and I pay bills. I'm not your girlfriend, I'm a baby mom. I don't want you no loyalty, I used to go loyalty, I don't want you to do that now. Yeah, but I pay the bills in here. It doesn't matter, you pay them with you. Nobody paid nothing with me. I just dropped off 25, 2500 over here the other day. And you got five bands. Who, who dropped off over here? What, 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 what that say about you as a woman, though? Rent. It's light, school, kid got to eat. You're not providing. Yeah, but we was together for five years. Like, okay. why, like why do you think it's okay to, to fuck my brother, though? Time don't mean nothing. Time ain't nothing but a number. I'm just saying, though, like, that's, that's crazy that you feel like... It's an idol. And, I, and I'm going to let the whole world know that you fuck my you brother. I can't even expose it, no. No, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to expose you with this video, though. Okay, that you but fuck you, my brother, but though. The thing is, the thing, the thing is, the thing is, the gag is. No, 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 it's you not. You're going to look stupid because you're trying to expose me. No, no, I'm not going to look stupid. You're going to look stupid because we got a whole two-year-old together and you fuck my brother. Okay, the two-year-old wasn't here when it happened, so it doesn't matter. But I'm just saying, though, like, what was the point of that, though? Like, what you get out of that, though? Like, you have no self-respect for yourself. You have no self-respect for yourself. <laughs> See, this show that you really childish and you're not you're not mature at all in no type of way though. Not the sad music. Listen, let's see what these comments are saying. I'm bothered to the fullest, but he just hurting himself. Um somebody says she keep it in the family. I mean they were broken up to her credit, but Really how do you explain that to your kids when they see uncle over there smashing I'm just just a curious question uh, but the, the music and all that was just a bit much for me let's see what else is going on like I said Twitter is just been crazy what's happening in the world because I'll be stuck on the Twitter on timeline all day so a second man has been sent to life in prison for death of a woman who was kept in a cage and dismembered in southwest Missouri in 2021 multiple Rankin County Sheriff's deputies have been fired after two black men accused them in a federal lawsuit of beating torturing and sexually violating them and this happened in Mississippi Involved this in- Deputies involved with this incident were placed on administrative leave pending final investigative findings due to recent developments, including findings during our internal investigation, those deputies that were still employed by this department have all been terminated. Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey reading off a prepared statement regarding the deputies involved in the genuine statement regarding the deputies involved in the January incident where Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Parker say they were tortured, tased, and beaten. However, the sheriff didn't offer much else after that. We cannot, however, confirm or deny any specific facts related to this incident because of active ongoing, active and ongoing investigations. Malik Shabazz, who's the attorney representing the two men, responding to these latest developments, saying, quote, Sheriff Brian Bailey has finally acted after supporting much of the bloodshed that has occurred under his reign in Rankin County. The next credible and honorable step for Brian Bailey is to resign or to be ousted. In quote, everything dating back to January 24th. That's when deputies were called out to 135 Connerly Road in Braxton after reports of narcotic activity. While responding, Shabazz says the deputies tased, punched, and sexually abused the two men for 90 minutes, and one deputy shot Jenkins in the face. Body cameras were not activated during this entire incident. In February, the Department of Justice opened an investigation 
into possible civil rights violations by the Rankin County Sheriff's Department. On June 12th, a civil rights lawsuit was filed against the deputies involved at the Sheriff's Department seeking $400 million in compensatory and punitive damages. Then, more than a week later, on June 23rd, deputies involved in the incident were fired from the department. While Shabazz is happy to hear that the deputies have been fired, he says he still thinks they should face a stiffer punishment, saying, quote, however, criminal indictments of the deputies from the attorney General of the state of Mississippi and criminal indictments by the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice is the next step in this tough fight for justice in this nasty ordeal. End quote. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I don't know why y'all want to live in Mississippi. I have family there, but what is the allure besides the racism and the magnolia trees? Like, I don't get it. Pete Davidson is going to rehab. That dude, he got some issues, but I guess he stay getting treatment, but he could just be having all kind of issues. DC Studios has a new Clark Kent. They cannot keep a Clark Kent, man. Clark Kent ain't been Clark Kent since the old school guy that we had was in the wheelchair and everything. That dude was like Clark Kent forever. Now it's just, you know, just a new one every year a seven month old was killed when an Ohio man who abducted his girlfriend's infant and fled in a Camaro drove into the house at full speed after police tried to pull him over it's crazy They're saying that Biden is using a CPAP machine at night to sleep. He has sleep apnea. Or his clone just needs charging. Whichever one you want to look at that. A Royal Caribbean passenger was rescued this week after falling overboard from the 10th deck of the cruise ship near the Dominican Republic. Y'all in these cruises, I'm telling you, I don't want to do it. Well, this many reported drownings in such a short period of time is unusual. The Newsweek has recorded 195 rib currents deaths since 2002. So rib currents are still killing people down there. So y'all better be safe with that. Taylor Swift's concerts are still causing a ruckus around the world. I honestly only know one Taylor Swift song, but you guys really love her. So they did find some human remains from the submarine. Colds are back in full force. Don't we love allergy season? It's like you just really don't get a break. That's why my favorite part of the year is like the fall because that's kind of like allergies aren't so bad and the bugs die. McDonald's has a new berry flavored Grimace shake. And it's a hit on TikTok, inspiring countless memes. I don't know if I want a grape shape. Ugh. I don't even sound good. It's berries. I mean, is it strawberry? I mean, ugh. I don't even sound good. Yeah, let's see what else we got. Kevin Costner is still trying to get through his divorce. Madonna was hospitalized for a serious bacterial infection. Madonna, this is another person that got fake butt and fake everything. Kim Kardashian bought hair and makeup stylist to get ready for her her driver's license photo, which sounds about right. See how I started this thing talking about fake people? 
So Chrissy Teigen had a surprise baby. Um, she just had a baby five months ago and she had a baby delivered by surrogate. She said she always had one in four kids and a lot of people were in an uproar about this. I don't know why. But she is entitled to have another child if she wants. I thought last time I checked, the taxpayers aren't paying for it. So what's the big deal? Simone Biles is back competing for the first time since the Tokyo Olympics. And yeah, let's get in the reddits. Most of this, most of this stuff is repetitive at this point. Unless you guys want to know what color Kim's hair is now. And I can tell you it's blonde for if you wanted to know. Um, <clears throat> let's see what Reddit's talking about. Is it, fri- is it weird to be friends with exes or any past sexual relationships? For me, it would be. I mean, I'm social media friends, but like hanging out. Nah, we ain't about to do that, bro. Somebody said, I feel like it's most people are uncomfortable with their partner being in contact with an ex. So that already puts, take, takes people to a weird place. Single people, I don't know. I think it's great if they were positive. But when I see people talk about being friends with their ex, they always make it sound like it's a forced relationship. Listen, when I was single and friends with my ex, we were probably still smashing on occasion. So that's why I said, not a good idea. What is something you do to let men know you're interested? What is something you stop doing because it sent the wrong message? Something I do, look their way. Something I stop doing, look their way. <laughs> Follow them around and generally try to be useful. Try and pay them lots of compliments. If I get a chance to hug them, I'll jump on that. And eventually I'll just ask them out. Dang, this girl, she just goes in. Eye contact works pretty well for me and vice versa. If I'm not interested, I don't look at them. See, that's all you gotta do. Most men, you can just, you just gotta look at them. Do you watch porn with your partner? No. I have in the past. So just When you get a certain age, porn is not for you. I mean, you know? It's, I mean, I guess if you need some tips or something. But I mean, I know old people watch porn. I'm just not one of those old people. What kind of people are you intolerant of? Rude people. People who cannot have an open mind. Imagine being in an argument with someone and whatever. People that are tolerant of others' cultures. People who cause problems for others just because they're too lazy to do simple things like put their shopping carts in the coral when they're done shopping. Yeah. Non-courteous people are annoying. Especially, my biggest pet peeve is like when I'm shopping and people just be all the way in the aisle. That drives me insane. Okay, let's see what these men are up. What percentage of men actually enjoy going down on a woman? Let's see what the men are saying. Mouth on clit and hands on boobs. Always a good time for me. Somebody said 50 per, 52% of men who have never gone down on women enjoy it in comparison to 28% of women who really enjoy it. Another 41% of men stated the experience was adequate or meh. There you go. So over half. 
A lot of people have opinions on this. Tough to say, really, but I just made an extra poll for myself and found it out. It's 100%. <laughs> I do, I do put me in coach. A lot of men say they enjoy it. Some guy said, I don't have a percentage, but I have some happy mem memories of thighs closing on my head while I worked. Drowning in my thighs would be my absolute way to, favorite way to die. So there you have it, ladies. The men that don't like it are lying because there's a lot of dudes out here that like to munch on the crunch. <laughs> I know that's corny. I know that's corny, bruh. All right, let's get into the story, Tom. Still finding body parts. So obviously this crime scene, it, you know, it hasn't even been cased properly on both sides. There have been conclusions that have been made that are not supported yet. There have been at least eight modern day lynchings since 2000, and there are probably dozens and dozens more. We just don't know these people's names. It was actually a white reporter who told me that they would just go check in sheriff's departments or police stations and say, hey, what you got today or what happened? And the cops in this day and time would say, nothing but a nigger killing. And so that tells you how these cases are kind of treated like on a mass scale in this state. Nothing but a nigger killing. Yes. Black lives and, and white lives are treated differently in terms of the response by law enforcement in Mississippi. So I understand the assumptions for sure. Vice News has reached out to the Taylorsville Police Department for an interview. They declined. We were able to speak to Smith County Sheriff Joel Houston, who's taken over the case since Carter's remains were found. He says they're doing all they can to find answers for the Carter family. When you first heard about this case, what was going through your mind? We had a job to do, and that was, that was locating, you know. So that's what we sought out to do. Clearly, there are people who feel like, hey, this isn't being handled right now. Well, it is being handled right. That's part of the world we live in today. What do you mean by that? It's easy to blame the police. Do you think that's changed recently? I think it's changed in the past six or seven years, I'm sure. There's some pretty serious accusations. Mm -hmm. Going all the way up to saying, hey, there's some kind of cover-up happening. Do you have any sense of why people would feel that way? I don't. I really don't. The sense that I've seen in the community is that people's lives are being disregarded specifically because they are black and that if the victim was white if the person who was missing was white uh it would be different was that a question or a statement or i don't care what color the person is we have a job to do and we're going to do it this is not a, a racist place a racist county and white black pink or purple we've got a job to do they're trying to portray that you know this is a bad county this is where hate crimes take place and that is not the case have you seen the image of the Taylorsville chief of police power washing away the writings of what did you think of that i really don't want to get into all that what's that <laughs> you cut the camera for a minute i can i can tell you why i'm asking i can tell you why i'm asking the community sees that mm -hmm. and that's not you but it is a man with a badge right yeah that, that picture that was not a, that was not for social media this started before the, that picture ever took place. You're from here. This is your community. This is the community you serve. How does it make you feel when somebody says, this is lynching, there's a cover-up? It puts out a, a false narrative, which brings up a lot of troubled history um, that's not anywhere accurate to what we're dealing with with this case. Again, so this is Mississippi, once again, and this story was about this guy, Rashim Carter. Um, so here's what's going on with it. So in Taylorsville, a potential fourth set of remains that may belong to Rashim Carter, a 25-year-old black man who went missing in Mississippi in October, has been found and investigators said they're working on analyzing them. The development comes after Carter's family continues its call for justice in the case, which has dragged on for months. The local officials have said they believe there was no foul play and the disappearance and cause of death remains undetermined. Family members believe that doesn't hold water. I'm overwhelmed with oppression that this state have caused in our lives. I want something done and I want it done immediately. I'm tired of waiting, his mother said. I know I can't change what has happened, but we can change 
that this doesn't happen to another family. Um, on the day of his disappearance, Rashim allegedly sent a text to his mother saying that he was afraid for his safety and that men in truck were yelling racial slurs at him. Um, Simpson, Simpson County Sheriff Paul Mullins confirmed that remains were found in the woods on April 30th. He said they appeared to be animal bones, but they were sent to the coroner. He added the Mississippi Medical Examiner would analyze them on Monday. In November, the first set of remains were found in neighboring uh, Smith County. A skull and spinal cord were located in several locations, classifying them as two sets of remains, according to Crump's office. Another set of remains that matched Carter's were found in February. Crump said Mississippi officials have been notified the family of the fourth set of remains. He said a bystander filmed the police retrieving the remains and sent them the video. There is no excuse for bystanders coming, showing video to family and friends, not having the dignity to respect or notify the family immediately. Mississippi state officials involved in the invest- investigation told ABC that they were received the first three sets of remains. So pretty much they're saying that there's lynching going on. Um like this is a four set of remains they found and again i say to you why do y'all live in mississippi i just curious well good afternoon to you we've got some breaking news right into the eyewitness newsroom a registered sex offender accused of raping a 14 year old girl and giving her hiv was just found guilty of sexual assault of a child a few moments ago. A jury has been following this uh, case for a while here. And the verdict was just announced, as we say, just moments ago by the jury. His name is David Wilson, and it's accused of sexually assaulting the girl over a period of two years. She was found to be pregnant, and she tested positive for HIV. Sentencing is starting right now, and he could get up to life in prison. Now, as if that isn't bad enough, he's also accused of sexually assaulting his 23-month-old niece, not even two years old. According to court documents, the toddler was taken to a doctor where she was diagnosed with HIV, genital herpes, and chlamydia. Again, not even two years old. Now, this isn't Wilson's first time being convicted of a sexual assault. According to the Texas DPS Sex Offender Registry, back in 2004, Wilson was sentenced to four years in prison for sexual assaulting another teenage girl. So once again, we have just learned he has been found guilty of sexual assault of a child. This goes back to, um, goes back now to uh, the jury for sentencing. That is so sick. Yes. We now know they had been scrambling to have someone unlock the chains. Okay, do you mind if we come in and just take a look, make sure everybody's safe and everything's okay? Okay, what kind of call did you get? Well, we got a call that there was a young female walking around saying that she came from a house over here. And we were able to find out that this was a house and we just wanted to check and make sure everybody was okay. Think she came from here? That's what she said. From inside this house? I think so. Otherwise, we wouldn't be knocking on your did door on Sunday. Did she say her name? Um, I don't know. Did she say her name? I don't know offhand, but we, we need to check. We just need to check and make sure everybody's okay. okay. Once we get in, make sure everybody's okay. We have a lot where we're packing. Okay, okay, ready fine, to move. No worries. So it's a mess in here. So. All right, that's, that's We don't mind messes. We've been at worse. How you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. No okay. weapons in the house or anything like that? No. I do have, uh, I do, I do have a gun that's locked, it's locked up. Okay, locked up is good. We like that. Okay. Okay, well, we're going to come in and check, okay? We just want to make sure everybody's okay. Uh, do you have a search warrant or anything? Or no. As sheriff's deputies move through a door into a horrifying landscape, the windows are closed. The room is swelteringly hot, magnifying the stench of excrement, decaying garbage, mounds of mothers molding food, every sofa counter floor covered in layers of trash, and unopened toys. Hi, kids. Oh, it's okay. Louise Turpin quickly tries to follow the deputies. All right, stay there for me for now. An officer distracts David Turpin with topic after topic. Okay, well, what's your name, sir? David. David. Where are you guys had, planning on moving to? Over no, right my, my job's in business. Oh, okay. Louise Turpin is directed to go back to the front door. Why don't you stay over here with my partner, okay? A pale, emaciated child moves through the living room. Her clothes dirty, so was her hair. Oh, okay. What do you do for work? I'm, a, I'm an engineer. Oh, engineer. With... 35 years in our Louise Turpin nervously probes again. 
You got a call? Yeah, we got a call from, I'm not sure if it was the young girl that left or if it was a neighbor that saw her walking around the street. So we'll get to the bottom of it. As soon as we make sure everybody's okay, then we'll decide. We'll, we'll figure out if maybe she was one of your kids that wandered away. How many kids do you have? Thirteen. Thirteen total? Yeah. Woo! You guys are busy. Yeah. As the parents are talking, deputies head into the center of the house. Okay, there's a hallway. They pass the parents' bedroom, then down the hall, two other bedrooms. The deputy looks in the first door and discovers a crushing scene. Those two young girls from their sister's photos. One is on a bed, the other a mattress on the floor. They are limp, frail, eerily quiet, caked in dirt. Their arms are bruised. But where are the chains? Hi, sweetheart. Hi, girls. <laughs> Can I see your wrist? Yeah. Me too. Okay. Hi, how old are you? Next, the deputy heads to the bedroom next door. Two filthy bunk beds, but no child is chained. He pleads with the children. Can they tell him where are those chains? Okay. Thank you. We're here to help you. Okay? Just work with my guys. We will help you guys. Okay? Back at the front doorway, the deputy who has been talking to the parents notices something. Almost obscured by the six foot one inch David Turpin and the pile of boxes to his right. Another bedroom back here. You got another couple kiddos asleep there. Yeah. Sarge, you got another room in the front right here with two kiddos in the bed over here. So yeah, those were those turpin people that had those kids chained up and starving them and one of the little girls was able to escape and it is some, I mean, the thought of what goes on in some people's homes is just. <sighs> Breaking news, Disney cast members been arrested for 540 counts of CP. Check out what the sheriff had to say. Wow, he's 40 from Nevada. He's married, he works at Disney World at Cosmic Rays Restaurant. In fact, he just recently moved to Polk County from Indiana and he moved here specifically to work at Disney World. Well, you know, back in the day, they arrested Willie Sutton for robbing banks. He was a notorious bank robber. And they asked Willie Sutton, hey Willie, why do you rob banks? And he said, well, that's where the money is. Why do people like Paul Vell work at Disney? Because that's where the children are. And they want to be around children. He had 540 counts of child pornography from newborns to eight years of age. He also had videos. And he's, he was a sadio masochist. There was photographs where they had tied up babies in preparation for sexual battery. There was one where a child was just weeks old where they had the child's hands tied behind her back. Can you believe that? A very young child with her hands tied behind her back. There's videos of a three to six month old being sexually battered by an adult male. His wife asked, she's only been married to him for a year, did I marry a monster? Yes, you did. You married a monster. By the way, when we kicked the door and he came to the door nude, about this for a minute. Photographs of children bound up, some with their hands tied behind their backs. Infants. Infants. My mouth is just speechless, like wide open, just like, it just like makes you think like, yeah, when people get jobs at Disney and this is Disney not doing enough good like should Disney be doing psychological evaluations on people like <sighs> breaking
breaking news out of California. If you're a parent here, then you should know what just happened. Please excuse my face. I am very, very sick today, but you have to know what is going on. As you know, if you've been following me, um, we have been fighting a bill, AB 665, um, and unfortunately, this bill just passed the Senate floor, and it is now going on to the Assembly for a floor vote where it can be passed as early as next week and be signed into law by Gavin Newsom. This bill would um, emancipate 12-year-olds. So in the state of California, 12-year-olds can already consent to mental health services without parental consent or knowledge, but there are guardrails that have been in place for years that state until um, there, if there is proof of abuse, allegations of abuse, proof of self-harm or harm to others, the state cannot remove your child and put them into a residential shelter service. It's called due process. Well, this bill does away with with those guardrails. And now in the state of California, 12 year olds will be able to decide if they want to live at home or if they want to go under the care of the state of California into a shelter. Now the bill was super deceiving. You really have to know the family codes that are already in place to understand the bill. And if you look at my previous videos, I go through all of that, but it passed Senate. It is now going to the assembly, like I said. So if you, um, you know, in this, we have a better chance to defeat things in the assembly, but this thing is going to fly. So in short of thousands of people showing up in their district offices and talking to their representatives, this thing is going to be signed into law. And as everybody knows how California goes, so goes the nation. Nobody is safe. I don't care if you're in a red state or not. All right. There's been there has already been a move to change the political terrain all across the United States. So here's the information in a tweet. And if you look at that tweet, it, again, it's super interesting that California legislators will pass bills saying that people under the age of 26 should not be interrogated without an attorney because their prefrontal cortex isn't developed enough to be able to make decisions for themselves. And there was also bills that said vaping manufacturers can't target people under 26 because, again, the prefrontal cortex isn't developed. Yet California legislators want to give the keys to group homes to children 12 years and up. This is going to create even a more hostile environment in schools. Children can go to school, tell their counselor that they don't want to go at home anymore. They don't feel supported. They don't they don't want to be there. And their counselor will be able to facilitate a move into a residential shelter service. And because minors have 12 years and up have medical privacy, it's going to be really hard to get access. So I encourage you to homeschool. Check out the website under events so you can get your tickets. Schools are dangerous. And California legislators are proving yet again that they feel that the children belong to the state. Why are we trying to emancipate 12 year olds? I have no idea. I can only think of, uh, well, I can think of a million reasons, but this stuff is real, y'all. And y'all have to really get involved in what's going on with these bills that they're passing. And, and she's right. Like, as California goes, the rest of the states try to follow. So y'all need to pay attention. Hey, y'all. So this babysitter by the name of Adeline Burkett, she was watching these two toddlers in Panama City, Florida, ages one and two. And she ends up stealing their mother's car and driving them from Florida all the way to Wisconsin, which is over a thousand miles. Then once she gets the ping on her phone that, you know, they have put out an amber alert for the kids she takes the kids to a national park and drops them there like she don't let nobody know that they're there uh police officers sheriff officers they find the um kids at the park um later on that evening they don't know how long the kids were there you know because no one sounded the alarm and said hey the, you know we we're not kidnapping the kids we dropped them off at the park anything like that and anyway it was in wisconsin so they got her locked up they got the man she was with which was a 22 year old his name is marquan edwards of milwaukee this is the picture of her and marquan i don't understand why they took marquan to jail seeing how she's the babysitter she admitted to taking this woman's keys, taking the kids out the house and picking up Marquand from wherever and them going to Wisconsin all together. I don't understand why they took him to jail. I guess they're still investigating, but you know, um, normally it's innocent until proven guilty unless never mind. I mean, him being 22, you sh he should have known something was wrong. I mean, at least they had sense enough to drop these kids off before something happened to them. 
they should have definitely notified authorities that they were leaving them kids in the park because anything could have happened to the kids. So they were in God's grace. This, this couple or whatever this unit is, she, they said that this is an acquaintance. But I mean, what the hell is going on? So I just know that this mom of these kids are counting her blessings that she got her babies back safe and alive because in the world that we live in today, anything could happen to those babies. Anything. Uh, Marquand got arrested because he's black and he was hooking up with this white girl who took off from Florida to Wisconsin with somebody's kids. So Marquand took his black butt to jail as he should because that's what you get. I don't even feel sorry for him. What? You had this girl come way up here, drop some kids off in a park, and he ain't supposed to go to jail too? Yes, he's an accomplice. Sorry. He know better. He know better. As a black person, you know better, Marquand. Anyway, y'all, what a mess of news today. I'm going to try to find... I've been trying to find some good stories, but you know, it's some sickos out here. But isn't in yet is leaving. I am leaving and I'm gonna also bid you a, a well adieu or however they say that. And I'll be back tomorrow. I'm gonna try for some better stories, y'all. I promise. Peace.